Since the end of the First Cold War, many countries have been shrinking their armies but increasing their power projection capabilities. This has led to the growth of the amphibious assault ship market in the last two decades. The Spanish Juan Carlos Juan class landing helicopter dock, shortly LHD, is one of the strongest players in this market with its multi-purpose design. As the weapon detective, we're investigating Juan Carlos Juan class and its derivatives, the Canberra class and the Anadolu class. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel before we start and give us a thumbs up if you like our video. To be notified of our new video, please click the bell button. To better understand the Juan Carlos Juan class, we should go back to the time of the 1982 Falklands War. We can easily see that good fortune played an important role in the UK's victory in the South Atlantic. If the Falklands Islands were closer to Argentina, the Argentine aircraft would be able to stay in the air longer and be more effective. Also, if Argentina procured more Exocet missiles, undoubtedly the Royal Navy's losses would have been higher. The most important lesson learned from the Falklands War was that the amphibious task group's location must be as far away from land as possible. So, the landing ship tanks, shortly LST, have lost their effectiveness. Having studied the experiences of the Falklands War well, in 1998 and 2000, the Spanish Navy commissioned two Galicia-class landing platform dock-type ships. As the next step, by the early 2000s, Spain decided to replace its Newport-class LSTs, SPS Hernán Cortés and SPS Pizarro with an LHD. There were two obvious reasons for this choice. First of all, an LHD can carry out an amphibious assault operation from a safe distance from the shores. Besides, this type of ship can perform light aircraft carrier duties. In those years, the Spanish Navy had the aircraft carrier SPS Príncipe de Asturias. The new LHD could have taken over her duty when she was in refit. Thus, the Spanish Navy would have uninterrupted carrier-based air power. Design work started in September 2003. The new ship was defined as the Buque de Proyección Estratégica, meaning strategic protection ship in Spanish, because of her multi-purpose design. The vessel was laid down in 2005 and launched in 2009. She was commissioned in 2010. In fact, SPS Juan Carlos I was not built to replace the SPS Principe de Asturias. However, in 2013, this ship was decommissioned because of the budget cuts. Thus, SPS Juan Carlos I became the only aircraft carrier of the Spanish Navy. She has a flight deck of 202 meters with a sky jump ramp with an angle of 12 degrees. The flight deck is suitable for operating six medium-sized helicopters or six style combat aircraft or four cargo helicopters simultaneously. The Spanish Navy will deploy the NH-90, CH-47 and Tiger helicopter on the ship. The Spanish Navy currently operates the EAV SP Matador 2 aircraft and plans to use them until 2034. After that, Spain may procure F-35B to replace its EAV-8B fleet. There is also a large spot on the flight deck suitable for landing and taking off a V-22 Osprey. According to 2018 editions of Jane's Fighting Ships and Flotte de Combat, the hangar has an area of 1,400 square meters. There are two elevators, each with a capacity of 27 tons. Flight operations can be conducted up to Sea State 5. The first storage area of 975 square meters is under the hangar and suitable for transporting heavy materials such as main battle tanks. There is a second storage area of 2046 square meters for light vehicles. The ship, which has a 69.3 meter long and 16.8 meter wide stern well dock, can carry four LCM-1E class landing craft. 
This well dock is big enough for operating two LCAC class air cushion vehicles. The Spanish Navy also uses the AAV-7A1 amphibious assault vehicles with the ship. SPS Juan Carlos I has operating rooms, medical care rooms and intensive care units. Thanks to the azimuthal thruster pods and its special hull design, the vessel can sail easily on the shallow waters and narrow waterways. Although it was planned to mount air defense missiles with 20mm guns on the ship at the design stage, SPS Juan Carlos doesn't have these weapon systems. The complement is 295 person. The ship also has 172 person air wing. SPS Juan Carlos I can carry a marine brigade of over 900 troops with up to 46 main battle tanks or vehicles of equivalent weight. She has a length of 231 meters, a beam of 32 meters and a draught of 6.9 meters. Fully loaded displacement of the ship is 26,000 tons. One 26,860 horsepower General Electric LM2500 gas turbine and two 10,445 horsepower MAN3240 16V diesel engines provides the maximum speed of 21 knots. The ship can reach the range of 16,670 kilometers with the economical speed of 15 knots. SPS Juan Carlos I can carry four LCMs on her stern dock. Depending on the mission definition, up to 30 medium and heavy helicopters, or between 10 to 12 EAV SP Matador 2 aircraft and 12 medium helicopters, or 25 EAV SP Matador 2 aircraft are deployed on the ship. The vessel has four 12.7 mm machine guns as the armament. The combat data system of the ship consists of Scott Saturn 3S, Inmarsat, and Scamba. SPS Juan Carlos is equipped with the Lanza N Air Search, Ares Surface Search, and PAR aircraft landing radars. Australia decided to replace its LSD fleet with two new LHD in the early 2000s. In those years, the Royal Australian Navy had three LSTs which were the Newport class HMAS Canibla and HMAS Manura as well as HMAS Tobruk. In 2007, Australia chose the Juan Carlos I class of the Spanish Navantia. This was a big and important tender because Navantia was also the winner of the air defense destroyer tender of the Royal Australian Navy. Navantia built the hulls of the ships up to the flight deck in Spain. Then, these hulls were transported by heavy cargo ships to Australia. BAE Systems Australia completed the installation of the island's superstructure and internal hull systems there. Construction of the first LHD, HMAS Canberra, started in 2008. The ship was launched in 2011 and was commissioned three years later. The second vessel, HMAS Adelaide was commissioned in 2015. These two LHDs, called Canberra class, have the same physical dimensions as SPS Juan Carlos I, but they have different island superstructure design and internal layout. Unlike their Spanish sister, HMAS Canberra and HMAS Adelaide have a Saab 9LV Mark IV combat management system, Sea Draft 3D surveillance radar, and a Vampire NG infrared search and track system. Also, they are fitted with four 25mm Typhoon remote controlled weapon systems of Rafael and six 12.7mm machine guns. It is planned that the Canberra class will be equipped with three Phalanx closing weapon system. The Royal Australian Navy does not have any style aircraft, yet, Australian ships also have the Sky Jump ramp. There are two reasons for this. First, Redesigning the ship to remove the ramp would have added unnecessary costs. Second, the retention of the sky jump gives the opportunity of operating style aircraft in future to Australia. However, the Royal Australian Navy has no official plans to procure the F-35B for now. Nevertheless, thanks to its design, the Canberra class has the advantage of allowing the use of the F-35Bs belonging to allied countries in a joint operation. 
The hangars of the Canberra class LHDs are 500 square meters smaller than SPS Juan Carlos I. For this reason, the hangar can accommodate 18 helicopters. In normal use, these LHDs carry 1,046 soldiers and their equipment. The standard air group of the Canberra class consists of a mix of the MRH-90 utility and MH-60R anti-submarine helicopters. However, depending on the mission definition, the Tiger Attack and the CH-47 cargo helicopters are also deployed on the ships. Australia, which doesn't have any armored amphibious assault vehicles, uses the LCM-1 E-Class landing craft and the LARCV amphibious cargo vehicles in landing missions. Unlike Spain and Australia, Turkey has limited maritime security interests with more immediate area. For this reason, a Juan Carlos I class LHD ordered by the Turkish naval forces in 2015 will serve alongside with its LSTs. Even while the construction of the new ship was continuing, Turkey commissioned two Bayraktar class LSTs. Initially, the Turkish Navy was planning to use its new ship, defined as the Anadolu class, only for amphibious assault missions. Therefore, different from SPS Juan Carlos I, it wanted a single elevator and a slightly shorter flight deck without the sky jump ramp. Later, Turkey changed this plan and decided to use the ship as both the amphibious assault ship and a light aircraft carrier. Thus, the final design of Anadolu class has included sky jump ramp and a second elevator. In 2016, Sedef Shipyard of Turkey began the construction work of TCG Anadolu. The ship was launched officially in 2019. However, there is a rumor that due to a problem in the dry dock, before the official launching ceremony, TCG Anadolu was launched for a short time and was dry docked again. Also, the ship caught fire while in dry dock just five days before the official launching. Fortunately, this accident didn't cause any loss of life or damage. Originally, the Turkish Navy was planning to commission TCG Anadolu in 2021. Later, this date was pulled to 2020. However, due to the problems caused by the global pandemic, the date was updated again as 2021. Turkey has not yet found a budget for the second ship of the class, TCG Trakya, because of the current economic difficulties. TCG Anadolu has a Smart S Mark II air surface search and SPN 720 naval precision approach radars. There are five 25mm stop remote control weapon systems, two phalanx closing weapon systems, and a ram air defense missile launcher on the ship. The Turkish Navy is evaluating to use the 35mm Korkut D closing weapon systems of Asal Sun instead of the phalanx. The combat management systems of the LHD, the Genesis Advent, is developed by local Asalsan and Havalsan companies. In the current situation, Turkey's plans to use TCG Anadolu as a light aircraft carrier fell through. Turkish Navy had planned to procure the F-35B. However, because of the S-400 crisis, the USA removed Turkey from the F-35 program in 2019. For now, Turkey is planning to deploy an air group consists of four T-129 attack, attack helicopters, eight Cougar Utility or CH-47F cargo, and two S-70B Seahawk anti-submarine helicopters on the vessel. Turkey plans to use the locally developed UAVs on TCG Anadolu. However, to use the UAVs, major modifications have to be done on the flight deck, which makes this plan extremely expensive and technically hard. The local company, FNSS, is developing a new armored amphibious assault vehicle called MAV for use with the TCG Anadolu. Turkey will procure 27 units of this vehicle. Whether it is an amphibious assault or an aircraft carrier task force, there have to be a surface combatant that provides area air defense as part of the task groups. For this mission, the Spanish Navy has the Alvaro de Bazan class frigates. The Royal Australian Navy uses the Hobart class destroyers. However, the Turkish Navy does not have a surface combatant capable of area air defense. 
So, Turkey will not operate TCG Anadolu efficiently until the ships of the TF-2000 project are ready. During the first Cold War, only the USA had the privilege of owning the LHDs. More than 10 countries use them today. Of course, the main reason for this transformation is the changing modern combat requirements. But today, the navies can also build ships, like the Juan Carlos I, which is highly capable but affordable. As you know, in recent years, the tensions in the Pacific and the Eastern Mediterranean are increasing. So, in the future, it will not be surprising that we hear more about the SPS Juan Carlos I, HMAS Canberra, HMAS Adelaide, and TCG Anadolu. Thanks for watching our video, and please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and give us a thumbs up if you like our video. To be notified of our new videos, please click the bell button.